Right on. Well, good for you, sir. So, you know, I just want to bring it up because, you know, when a crisis and yeah. if I have my own island, I would just stay there by myself. Right. You know? Well, what else do you think we need to be doing uh, different? Well, just wear your mask and, you know, put on your big boy pants and take the shot. <laughs> you know, everybody has their own opinion, but that's just my own. Right on. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks. Take it easy. All right, there you go, 703. Let's go into the Zoom room now. Uh, Mayor Louise is standing by. Guys, you can call anytime, 637-0094. Uh, Mayor, good morning. Uh, okay, good morning. Hi, there you are. Good morning. How are you, Mayor? I'm fine. And you? We're doing um, pretty good. We're, good. we're, doing, we're getting by. We're, we're getting by. Um, we're anticipating things will improve shortly. Yes. Did you hear anything, Mayor? Because the uh, Adeloupe came out at one thirty yesterday, and they said that uh, there's going to be some new restrictions, uh, limitations involving social gatherings uh, that would be announced shortly. Uh, that was yesterday. This is today. Have you heard anything about what limitations will be announced? Um, no, not right off. I get um, you know just what comes from the Joint Information Center. And, um, you know, but no discussion uh, with us. Um, it's just been a very busy day. Um, every day is quite busy for us. And, and so, um, you know, we're waiting to, I guess, get the official mandate of you know, the executive order. It really surprised me with um, different businesses in our community that, um, you know, uh, even just trying to call around to place orders and stuff, telling us that, they're not going to, um, you know, they're not going to be opening for dining or takeout, things like that, you know, and then of course, um, information um, coming out on social media, you know, uh, different uh, letters from businesses, you know, it's it's sad to see, you know, everybody yeah. uh, hurt at places closing down, yeah. you know, um, because of, you know, not only uh, because of the pandemic, but the, uh, you know, the executive order. And I also saw there was, a, I don't know, I forget which business, because really there's so many, but there was one business that had put something out on their social media and it was along the lines of, there's just too many positive cases out there. Yo, we're going to chill and only do takeout. I forget right. which one it was, but there might be a couple of those. Uh, and that's what we're seeing, Mayor, is we saw it with Mayor uh, Johnny of Umatic. He said, hey, I don't care what the governor said or not said. It was more importantly what they're not saying. He was going to limit the gatherings himself, his own self. He said, I'm going to do it. We had GHRA saying we need to go down in our occupancy. We need to limit the social gatherings, right? So what are they saying in your village, Mayor, about this surge? Week four of this surge, 147 positive cases last night, 32 in the hospital, seven in the ICU. What are the people of Tatuha saying to their mayor? Well, I mean, you know, um, a lot of pe uh, them are uh, saying, you know, um, you know, we got to do what we can to stay safe and, you know, um, pleading for everybody to get vaccinated. So, you know, if they do co um, contract the, the, you know, the virus that it wouldn't be so bad, you know, that's supposed to help them. So, um, you know, just finding out too that a lot that are hospitalized are those that are not vaccinated. You know, there's a lot of people that have uh, their opinions and they're entitled to it, you know. So, um, you know, everyone, we just need to do what we can to stay safe and, you know, continue to, you know, to pray on this. I mean, you know, there's a lot of uh, things we cannot answer. We cannot see this virus, you know, even with um, me and our, our crew here, you know, we, we still need to cut the grass, direct traffic, do escort, you know. Um, you know, uh, offer or service to the, you know, the, for the office and stuff doing verification. So we're just, you know, um, continue to, to talk to everyone, to mask up, you know, there's people around you, even if you're outside, just put on your mask. You know, I, I'm here by myself, I know, so I'm without yeah. a mask. I know, Mayor. But I, I have my mask right here. Mayor, talking about <laughs> masks though, you heard that caller about uh, Home Depot. Did you investigate that? No, I am sorry. I'm not aware. I love to go to Home Depot, but I, I have not um, been there in a while. Yeah. Um, uh, is there 
Uh, some guy called in and said, "Oh, they don't. You don't have to wear a mask in there." So I don't know, guys. Whatever, if you can. Okay. No, what? I have not heard that. I just know that everyone um, is being told to wear your mask. Yeah. Um, no matter what, the only time you should be able to remove it is if you are actively eating or drinking. But then you know, yeah. or you want to keep distance from everyone else. Yeah. What about the schools, Mayor? Uh, we know that there was a positive at St. Anthony um, and just these these positives from the private school side, uh, more so because yeah. it's a bigger population, obviously, on the public school side. 69 cases now, GDOE. Yes. What, are, what are the parents in your village saying about their school-aged kids? Well, you know... Um this virus does not discriminate whether you're going to public school or private school or, or just anywhere else, you know, even in the home front, it's happening. Um, people are contact, um, you know, are, are, are catching this disease and, and, you know, it's scary just being even in the workplace, you know, you think that um, we're all safe, but, um, you know, we don't know what all the others, uh, other employees are doing when they get home or who they're in contact with and then they come back to work. So with parents and out in the schools, a lot of parents are worried and, you know, because, you know, they're going to get in trouble. They don't make their kids go to school. But then, you know, look how fast these these students are catching this. And, you know, um, especially for those that are unvaccinated, you know, we have uh, the elementary school level I have uh, parents that have approached me about that, you know, um, you know, from what, what they're seeing and what their kids are telling them, you know, that it's not safe. And then um, these kids that are healthy, they go to school, but then they, they come back home where the parent could be, um, you know, have comorbidities, you know, where they're uh, diabetic or they are cancer patients or, you know, what have you. So there, there's a lot of worry and people, I know um, a lot of these parents are trying to find ways to make their children go to school online. They want to bring that back, you know, but um, I know there's different issues with uh, our students. I have, there's some of them here in Tumuni that they were not able to um, do online school. Um, so in order for that, you know, because they have parents that are ill, um, they were able to get into Ocean View, you know, so um, uh, they're going, they're able to go online, but to, you know, a school down south and not, you know, their their designated school. So, you know, um, we continue to reach out um, to uh, GDOE to, you know, to see, you know, um, uh, you know, how we can assist in different ways and, um, you know, to, to help make things safer. Now, you know, every day we have really heavy traffic from the schools. Um, you know, we have a JFK and Chief Brody on Route 1. Then we have um, Too Many Elementary and LBJ um, on Route 14, Chana San Antonio, and then also with St. Anthony School. So it's a really busy, you know, area. And, um, um, you know, even with like the personnel that we have out there, I mean, there's there's, you know, like issues with, um, you know, parents parking and then trying to get down to go and pick up their child and go, you know, um, or even just to drop off, you know, things like that. And so, you know, they're coming in contact with our people, you know, the, um, you know, just walking on the street. So, you know, it's uh, again, um, we ask everyone to just respect each other, you know, keep your distance, wear your mask and, you um, if you are coughing or sneezing, stay home, you know, if you're feeling sick. Yeah, you know, just, um, um, you know, try not to be near anyone or go anywhere where, you know, you may affect other people. Yeah, Mayor. So, um, yeah. Everyone's concerned and yeah. we're worried. We're worried about this because we can't see it. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we plead for everyone to, you know, do your part, do what you can to stay safe. What do you think we need to do, Mayor? Um, if you were governor for a day, what type of like limitations or whatever would you put in place? 
Oh, well, again, everyone, um, you know, is entitled to their opinion. And, yeah. This is and, just uh, her opinion, guys. It's just her opinion. Okay, nowadays, people get in trouble for voicing their opinion. So this is the mayor's opinion. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, it goes back to, you know, like the beginning. I mean, where is this virus coming from? And, you know, um, with all the restrictions that they're saying, um, you know, a lot of people have approached me about uh, the quarantine. Um, you know, there's, um, you know, there there should have been more restrictions in um, the borders, you know, of what is coming in because of, you know, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of people that, um, you know, of because they're able to or because they're um, essential, you know, where they don't need to uh, quarantine and, you know, um, it, you know, so, you know, it goes back to all those things. It being, I know that the, our governor has, uh, she makes tough decisions. And um, likewise, you know, with us, uh, you know, I, I don't know where it's coming from, and I, I just want, um, you know, I, we, I, we need to be more stricter about, about those that are coming in because, you know, you may be up here well that first day, but then after four days, you know, you, you know, you find out, oh, you have, yeah, you, you have COVID, and mm. then, um, you know, all the people you were, um, you've you've contacted with you know been in contact with it's just you know you, you never know and yeah. so again um if i was governor for a day <laughs> i i would automatically reach out to all my of course my advisory council from the the doctors especially because you know they are the ones dealing with all our illnesses you know including mine i you know so you know, I continue to reach out and get their opinion and get their advice on what we should do and how we should stay safe and, you know, um, help us to get tested, you know, and where can we go for a vaccination, you know, so there, there I, I will continue to reach out to our advisory group right. and really listen, listen to them. Uh, yeah. What about this uh, vaccination status uh, thing? Are there, are, I ate out yesterday. Well, we did it for a, sh a shoot, and they actually carded me, which is cool because it's the first time I've been carded in years. <laughs> but they carded me, and they were like, we need to see your vaccination status. And I was like, hello, you didn't get the memo? <laughs> you, we can self-attest now. But they didn't know. And they, businesses, I feel like if they didn't know about that other memo that came out in the middle of the night on when, when was it again? I already forgot. Was it Monday? <clears throat> It was Monday, yeah, after D-Day. The Monday, they uh, came out with a, a new guidance, new executive order on Monday, so that now you can, obviously, you guys know, you can self-attest. You can just say, I swear I'm vaccinated, grandma's grave. Um, or you can swear that you've had at least one shot of the vaccine, and you can go in. But I guess they didn't know, so they carded us. And I mean, it was cool because I carry it because you never know when, what kind of decision these guys are going to make in the middle of the night that's going to affect, you know, what you got to have on you. So I carry it and we got carded and we went in and did the shoot and it was all good. But is there a confusion in your uh, villages, Mayor, about what the hell the policy is? Well, um, we did raise those questions. I mean, because, um, you know, looking at the executive order and the guidelines, um, you know, from public health, there were, uh, you know, there were parts there that were uh, contradicting each other. And, um, uh, you know, so again, it was, um, even with that, you know, you're going to take, you know, they're just using the honorary system saying that, you know, I'm, I'm vaccinated, but, you know, we know that there are people that are not. And, um, um, you know, uh, so with all the gatherings now, and I mean, they can say, yeah, I'm vaccinated, but they're really not, you know, so, so it's a problem. I mean, they, you know, either they are going to have everyone produce their car because, you know, when this mandate came out, um, we, even us, we were going like crazy trying to find ours because, you know, we had our, with me, I have my vaccination ever since February. Um, but, um, you know, we, I didn't think I needed 
to carry that around or laminate it or, you know, so uh, I'm just thinking I'm going to need it when I travel, if I should travel. So, you know, now everyone's trying to get their card, but then we, we hear that, okay, you don't need it. So, so anyways, um, you know, um, good luck. I mean, you know how things go because, you know, that's why I say just stay away from, don't get too close to people, continue to wear your mask and sanitize and, you know, because you never know. People will say, yes, they are and they're not. Yeah, yeah, it's honor system. I had a friend whose wife is pregnant. She went to go get takeout at a local restaurant and they carded her. They asked her for her vaccination card for takeout. And of course she was like, I'm not going to do this and just left. Right. So that was Monday. Um, things have kind of changed since then. But Mayor, let me ask you about this vaccination clinic forever 21. Uh, you know, they're opening up the, did you know they're opening a vaccination clinic at uh, GPO forever 21? No, I know that they're, they have it in different places, but um, not in particular. I mean, you know, I haven't uh, worked with the uh, GPO management on that yeah. or, you know, um, any discussion. I did it was not brought to my attention. Oh, it's totally ready. They got the tables and the chairs and everything in there. But do you anticipate that's going to bring uh, more traffic and just, I mean, busyness to that area? Um, uh, yes, it will bring more traffic. I know that, you know, we, we've seen, I've seen, um, you know, the traffic at the Micronesian Mall. Um, you know, and there's, uh, there's other places people can go as well, you know, for their uh, vaccination. Um, you know, I know that private clinics are doing it in other places and, and you know, um, well, with a, a American Medical Center, you know, um, the, you know, um, I know that they have personnel that are down in Tumon and um, there has not been lines there, but, um, you know, a lot of people were very pleased, you know, when we sent them down there, we, we told them that, you know, they're doing vaccinations there and they're like, wow, it was so fast, no line. So, um, you know, it, it's happening in different places and, um, you know, uh, people should uh, continue to uh, be informed to where all these locations are. We do what we can to help, and it, you know, especially if they reach out to to do it out in our villages. You know, of course, we're going to um, see what way we can assist, whether it be to you know give uh, chairs and tables, any you know any type of equipment or um, or like assistance with traffic. You know, um, we we would like for them to reach out to us and let us know what they plan to do. What about the all rise? Um, we had Daphne on yesterday. Mayor's offices. It looks like going to be a huge part in this process. Where this is a race. It's the all race act, right? The governor, uh, because of the way she put together this um, all race act, it's basically a free for all Hunger Games for eight hundred dollars. And it's coming at a time when the PUA is running out, right? The PUA is running out. There was a program that they had uh, touted when they addressed the business community at an economic forum. This is a Department of Labor program where they would subsidize the hiring of workers into the private sector um, for like a certain amount of months, right? They'll pay the salary of these workers if the private sector hires them. But that program is delayed. So it's not going to be implemented next week. It's not going to be implemented the week after. I'm pretty sure they're trying to figure it out. So there's nothing in place. There is no plan in place for these people who are getting off the PUA. We got $600 million in the bank, and there's nothing in place for these people who are getting off the of PUA. When again are they off the PUA? When are they off the PUA? When? September 4th. Yeah, they're off the pool September 4, out of loop. There's nothing in place. I was stressing about this last night. I was trying to go to sleep. I was like, man, there is nothing. Out loop has zero. Nothing. They didn't say, hey, this is our plan. We're going to put you on, you know, we're going to give you 100 bucks a week or something. You know what I mean? That ni ha ha fat, nothing. So that being said, Mayor, it's going to be war games for this all race act. Are you ready? Are you set? Well, we are, we try to always be ready. We, you know, um, expect the unexpected. And so, um, 
you know, we were told that we were going to have um, the applications delivered here. Um, we are supposed to get it by Monday. And so um, we have that available. And right now um, we are informing our residents, I mean, you know, to prepare and um, to, you know, of course, if you're, uh, the recommendation is to do the application for all rise online. So we're helping them with that and um, to make sure that they they register with guamtax.com, you know, make sure you have an email, email address or, um, you know, whatever type of assistance they may need, um, you know, we'll, we'll do what we can to keep them informed. Um, but right now the applications are not here yet. Um, the guidelines were discussed with us, but we're waiting for the actual hard copy so that we can start um, passing that out with, um, along with the application, the hard copy. But of course the, the suggestion is to go online and um, they can do, um, you know, be prepared now by making sure that they have uh, all the information they need in case um, they would like to have their checks direct deposited to their bank account or, you know, to even um, to register online with guamtax.com, you're going to need a username and password. Yeah. So do all that, you know, make sure that you have your your um, 2020 um, taxes filed already and everything is um, good and there's no problems, no issues. And, um, you know, because now, you know, we're seeing some of them are rushing, you know, um, trying to, they're supposed to make amendments and things like that. And they're like, oh, I have to hurry up because, you know, the, the all rise program. So all race. Um, yeah. they don't know when it's going to be cleared. If they were to make an amendment now, you know, how long is it going to clear, you know, when they, yeah. they, they, they want to hurry up. And, you know, our thing is like, well, why they did you wait so long well, but they waited so know, long because it was confusing mayor we didn't know when the governor was going to do the rise the all rise the race the whatever we didn't know it's the government's fault they were supposed to be paid this since january it's a law it's a law <laughs> it is a law yeah so that's why people waited because our people were stuck in this freaking yo-yo of the rise act i feel bad for our people they're pulled this way pulled that way show us your vax card don't show us your vax card you're gonna get the rise no it's all rise no i want to pay it no i'm gonna pay it no god yeah you can't blame our people mayor they tried they said go get the mayor's verification they went to go get the mayor's verification then they said never mind you don't need the mayor's verification who's in charge around here I see. Well, the governor has, um, you know, all her agencies working to make things happen. So hopefully they figure it out. Um, you know, we we move things um, smoothly. We'll do what we can to assist, and you know, especially working with all the emotional um, stress that people are going through. You know, I know this is um, a big. This is a big task, you know, for her as the governor, I'm sure. Uh, it's a bigger um, task for the people who've been waiting for the money, Mayor. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not going to feel sorry for the governor. I'm just not. I'm no, not. No, I feel I'm sorry for her people. To feel sorry for her. But There's I nothing mean, I feel I sorry for the governor about. The ones that are hurting are the people out here. Sorry. I, I you know, I, I feel, you know, we all have our feelings and stuff and we just want to make sure that you know if things are you know need fixing let's fix it let's you know let's get it let's get the, the people the help that they need yeah. and let's move it out smoothly let's go well, guys sign up for your my guam tax account okay if you don't have a my guam tax go on there sign up for it if you haven't filed you're a non-filer you're some of the poorest people on our island well, guess what? If you didn't file, you ain't getting nothing. So you got to go and file and you got to do it so that it's processed. So you got to do it online or you got to do it in person and make sure that they process it. But, you know, when you do it in person, they throw it in a pile and then someone looks over it. Daphne says if you file it online, it's butter boom processed. So you guys got to do your part. Mayor's right. 
The time for waiting is over. It's the race. Guys, you know when you turn on your car when they say, get ready, and the light's red, and everyone's like revving their gas? That's where we're at right now. We're just waiting for the light to turn green. And then it's all raised for $30 million to the death. Hopefully no one dies. Jay? Yeah, we're going to have to do a, a fair amount of like online browsing. like today. So like as you said, download the COVID alert app. Go grab that from your app store. Go on to myguamtax.com if you haven't already registered. And then if you are receiving unemployment assistance, you have yeah. to register with hireguam.com. Yeah. There's that too. Yep, guys. So just do your part. There's a lot of registering to uh, do. Thank, thank you, Mayor, this morning. Anything in closing you want to add? Again, you know, uh, I just plea for everyone to please, uh, drivers, motorists, you know, there's a lot of kids out there that are walking to and from the bus stop into the school. <laughs> and then also, you know, your pet owners, uh, please keep your dogs tied up and you know so because right now that that's a lot you know we're getting so many calls and complaints about loose pets you know out and about and um you know even as you know, pit bulls but they still have a leash on so maybe the owners are not knowing that their dogs are getting loose or running out of their property so um please mind all the you know the students and um people that are out there walking Stay safe, do what you can, keep your distance, and, um, you know, uh, give us a call if there is any need or, you know, um, that you may have out there in the community. If a street light is out or something's on the road or, you know, anything, you know, we're open to um, receiving calls from you anytime. Francis? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Sure, everyone. Be all safe. right. There you go. Mayor Luis Rivera getting ready for the All Race Act. Uh, it's 729. We're going to take a break. And coming up next, he's a good friend of the link. We've turned to him for a lot of advice over the course of this pandemic. Uh, we found out yesterday afternoon he will no longer be privileged enough to advise the governor. We're talking about the former chairman of the Physicians Advisory Group, Dr. Hoa Wen, and he is coming up next on The Link. It's 7.30. Good morning. The KUAM Podcast Network is back and on demand, featuring a great variety of podcasts from our island and region, including culture, lifestyle, awareness, crime, politics, commentary, comedy, and entertainment. Available on most streaming platforms. The KUAM Podcast Network. Subscribe and listen now.